What's up guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be modeling this amazing parametric facade that's used to cover the Albar Towers. Now this is a interesting triangular pattern and it's it will be fully parametric so you will be able to change the, the, the opening of each of these elements that are being used kind of a as a facade cover as well as sunshade. So it will be fully parametric. There is a bunch of code that we're going to be using, but I'm going to be going over everything slowly and I, I, I hope you will be able to understand how making complex parametric families like this works. It will be a two-part tutorial because there's just too much work, so I will have to separate that into two parts. And we're going to be modeling everything as a facade element and it will be a fully parametric facade element. Okay, but before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day. Okay, so here I am in Revit and let's start this off as a new conceptual mass. And I'm just going to drop back a couple of folders to go to conceptual mass metric, just because in my country we use metrics, so that's what I'm going to be using for this project here. And once we open this up, you can see we have here just our work planes. And let me just set the units first. So just type in UN and let's change them to meters just because or let's add two decimal places just because this will these will be large facade elements. So we don't we need meters. OK, so I'm just going to use this line and let's place one line over here and extend it and let's make it like 30 meters, that's that's fine. So this will be kind of a sample facade, let's say. And let's go into create form and we get this flat plane. And now let's select the, the top line and let's change this to 30. So we have kind of a 30 by 30 meter sample for our facade. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, we need to select our this, this face that we have basically. And then we need to go to the divide surface. The reason is because we need to divide this into some into a pattern and then we need to change this to a triangular pattern. So go here to the properties panel and you search for triangular and you have this bent and flat and I'm just going to be using flat triangles for this. OK, and this is what we have. Now, the first thing you need to do, you, you need to alter this pattern. It's OK, it should be triangular, but let me just make this a bit bigger. OK, so here we have this layout and both for the U grid and the V grid, that's the, the horizontal and vertical grids, it's a fixed distance, fixed number. And we need to change that from fixed number to fixed distance because we need to know which is the which is the distance for adding our parametric elements. OK, so once we have this, you can see here for this distance, we can actually add a value or a size of this distance. And let me just uh, select this to associate family parameter. This will allow us to give give us a parameter and to control every these distances parametrically. And that's what we need. So I'm just going to go here to new parameter. Make sure that is a, it's an instance parameter. And let's just change this to I don't know, let's just call it this is the U grid. So let's just call it U grid. And type in OK. OK. And let's go here for the V grid distance. And also create a new parameter and just call it V grid. And make sure that it's an instance parameter. OK, so you just go OK, OK, and you finish. OK, so the next thing we need to do, we need to set the parameters. So this should be kind of an equal side triangle and it's it's not, as you can see over here. So just go here to the family types. This is where you can see all of your parameters. And let's add a new parameter. So just go new parameter and again, make it an instance. And let's call this base. So this will be a base parameter that will be the base of our triangle and both sides will both sides will be the same size. And first for the V grid, if you just go over here and uh, but first let's set this base. So let's set it to five meters. And for the V grid, let's set this to a divided by or base divided by 
divided by 2, sorry, okay, base divided by 2, and you just go apply, okay, it changed something, but let's change the U-grid as well, and this will be a bit more math, so for the U-grid, we need to add a formula, and this is the, the classical formula for the height of the triangle, and that's square root of 3 divided by 2 times the base. So I'm just going to open this up. So here I'm going to type in square root and you just type in SQRT, open up another parentheses, type in three, close parentheses, divided by two, close parentheses again to finish off this square root or this formula. Then you hit the asterisk. So this is shift eight probably on your keyboard and now we type in base and make sure that the caps are the same as here so this is capital B so here I need to keep capital B for base and then I go apply and we get this number and if I go okay this is now we have an equal side triangle here so this side this dimension is equal to this dimension and that's what we want to have and if I select this you can see these numbers here have changed and I'm just going to jump in here open this or go to here type properties and for this you grid this here dimension I'm just going to go control C to copy it because I, I will need to use it later and let's just hit OK okay so we're going to be leaving this sample over here this sample facade because now we need to model the actual uh, the actual element here or the pattern based element that's going to go be going over here and that's where all the parametrics will be okay and to do that let's go to file new family and let me drop back and use metric family just because that's what I prefer and here we have this curtain panel pattern based and this is our curtain panel pattern based or this is our pattern so we need to use this and if we select this here kind of a pattern we can change the properties from rectangle to triangle flat that's what we that's what we had okay so we have something that looks like this now we can select it and now let's change this spacing so for the horizontal spacing we had 2.5 meters and let's just change this to meters so there is no confusion so let me go here to meters to decimal places okay 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 select this horizontal spacing was two or vertical spacing was I think 2.5 and the horizontal spacing was well let's just Control V let's see okay that was in reverse okay so this should be 2.5 and this should be control paste 4.33 okay here we go we've got our triangle over here okay so now it's time to start building our family I'm going to go here to the create tab and choose this point element and when you select it make sure that it says here draw on face and now go here and make sure to snap it as you can see here on the midpoint and you do the same thing for all of these midpoints and now we have the midpoints for our triangle sides and now what you need to do you need to select this reference midpoint you select this point over here kind of the the opposing point and you go here and create a spline through points so it connects everything with a line and you just go here to the properties and you say make reference so now this is a reference line so you do the same thing here just connect spline through points is reference so we have that one and let's do this one as well so spline through points make reference and you probably can't see it but if we turn on turn off this thin lines you can see this thing now okay so this is what we have we have kind of a construction over here okay so now what we need to do is we need to place a point here on the intersection of these lines now you might just go here and place a point here where you can snap it but the problem is well, if this if we place this pattern on some bent facade or some facade that has uh, uh, bent elements these points may go up and down and th this actually will lose all of these intersections so in order to keep this point here in the middle or at one third of this line if you know about geometry about triangles this is one third this is two thirds of this height okay so we want to place a point here and keep it there so how do you do that you just go here to point 
make sure again that this draw on workplace plane is selected or drawn drawn face sorry is selected and you just place it kind of over here a bit down on this on this uh, reference line and if we just select this point and let's drop this down a bit if you can see here on the dimensions uh, we have this normalized curve parameter and what this basically means it means that this is the kind of the value of where this the, the this point is placed along this line and if we change this measure from point to measure from end this is kind of a at 24 percent of this distance starting from this point so this is 24 percent and this is uh, the 676 percent i guess of this line okay so we need to turn this into a parameter to hold it here at 3d at 33 point something percent so how do we do that well first we need a base parameter we need a parameter that determines this size and you do that just by going to set work plane set this work plane over here go into the dimension and you just dimension these two points and place a dimension line over here and you need to make this parametric so you select it and you turn it into a parameter so you just go create parameter make sure that it's an instance parameter call it base and make sure you select this report parameter this is the only time we're going to be using this in this tutorial and this basically means that this is not a tutorial a tutorial a parameter that you set but it's just a parameter that you kind of get from the model so if you place this on some sort of a different pattern it will read the dimension of that pattern that's the that's the important part okay so you just hit okay so this is a base parameter and now let's go here into family types and let's create a new parameter so once we're here let's create a new parameter call it an a parameter make sure that it's an instance parameter and for the formula for a a will basically determine the 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 height of the triangle so that's again the same formula we used so it's open parentheses square root of three divided by two closed parentheses why did I type in Z? Okay, divided by two, closed parentheses, and then just times base, so asterisk base. And base is here with no capital letters, so that's what I'm going to be using here. And for asterisk, you just type in hold shift and eight. That's on most computers. And if you go apply, okay, so we get that. 4.333 number that's the one we wanted to have okay so we need another parameter so this will be called h parameter so this is the the height parameter so i'm just going to go here to new parameter call it h go instance and then let's just go okay and this instance parameter will be a divided by three so go apply so we get some number over here that's the distance of this one third of the of the height of the triangle okay and once we have that we need to create this uh we need to get kind of the percentage of this or the value between zero and one so we need that value this is 1.4 this doesn't work for us so we need a numerical value so we need to create a numerical uh numerical parameter let's just call it that so let's just go to new parameter instance parameter and here for the type of the parameter let's just type in number and for the name this will be h again because it's height but let's just call it ncp for this parameter over here so just go okay and this h ncp will be just h divided by a and you just go apply and you get this 0.333 that's okay just go okay and if we select this point again again normalized curved parameter that's why we called it a ncp and if we go here find our h ncp normalized curve parameter go okay and now as you can see it's set here exactly at the one third of the height of the triangle okay so we get that this is what we want and now we want to have kind of a vertical line over here 
along which our para parametric family or these flaps or triangles will be sliding. And to create that, you just go here to po point element, you go to set work plane, and you just hit the tab key while you get this horizontal one, and you just place it there on the horizontal one, and you, it, you, will, you will get this warning because you have now two points on top of each other, that's okay. And once you set this, you can go here and select it. And let's select this blue arrow and kind of pull it up a bit. And now here for the show reference plane, we have this option and we can set it to always. Now we can see this point a bit better. And here we have this offset. So this is the offset from this point over here. And we can actually create, associate that to a family, family parameter. And let's choose this family parameter A. So type OK. OK, it's a bit up, but you get the point. So there we go. We have it. And let's select this point over here. And again, select this to set this to always. So it's always showing. And make it visible. Or no, no matter. OK, and now we're just going to select both of these parameters and go spline through points or no, not a point, so you select one parameter, you select the second one, and you go spline through points, and you make sure that it is a reference line. Okay, so we have now all of the construction along which we're going to be placing these triangular flaps, and then we're going to be sliding across this height, uh, this line that basically determines the height, and that will determine how much this family will open up and close up. Okay, but I'm going to be stopping here because we're at kind of a halfway done part and in the next part that will be coming out tomorrow, I will finish be finishing off this this family and it will be fully parametric and then you'll see how to use it in a project. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the tomorrow's episode or the part two. Make sure to like this video, make sure to share it and if you have any questions, comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.